Okay, cool. So now is actually a great time to bring something up because we're starting to deal with more complex compounds now, compounds with a lot more carbons in them. Like, hey, before we saw one carbon, two carbon, maybe three carbon compounds, but now we're dealing with compounds that have a lot more carbons in them. And when you're dealing with these larger types of compounds, this traditional way of drawing them out isn't gonna cut it anymore. It takes too long. So I'm gonna show you an alternate way to represent these larger compounds. And this method is gonna be called the line angle method, all right? Okay, so let me give you some brief history. In the beginning of organic chemistry, everyone drew out compounds like this with the traditional way, and it was all good. But as people started dealing with more complex carbon compounds, compounds with a lot of carbons in them, people were like, dude, this way of drawing out compounds sucks. It takes too long. I'm sick of drawing out every single carbon and hydrogen in this compound. So one day, this guy, he finally gets fed up and is like, all right, forget this. I'm not drawing this out like this anymore. So what does he do? He draws some straight lines. Let me show you. Okay, so for a six carbon compound like this, he draws some straight lines that look like this. And each one of these lines, here's a line, here's a line, here's a line, here's a line, here's a line. Each one of these lines just represents a bond, a bond between two carbons. So that means that there's a carbon at the end of each of these lines. So a carbon here, 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 and a carbon here. So check it out. This line represents the bond between these two carbons. This line represents this bond. This line represents this bond. This line represents this bond. And this line represents this bond. And at the end of each of these lines, so here, 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 and here, there is a carbon. So, hey, this carbon is here. 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 But hey, if you're having trouble translating this to this, or you can't exactly see where carbons are located in this guy, then cool, let me show you how I do this. Because I remember when I first saw these things, this line angle method, I had a lot of trouble seeing where the carbons were or how many carbons I even had. So when my tutor told me I had to start drawing compounds like this, I was really upset. I was like, oh man, why can't I just keep drawing compounds out this old way? Because I was so used to it. But hey, you guys, I eventually realized that this old way takes too long. This line angle method is really the way to go, okay? So hey, to help you start visualizing where the carbons are in this thing, what I do is I just put a big dot at the end of each line to represent each carbon, okay? So check this out. Okay, so I put a big dot here, 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 and here. Let me make this one a little bit bigger. And these dots mean that a carbon goes on each one of those. And hey, this way, I don't have to mentally imagine where the carbons are anymore. I can physically see that a carbon belongs here, 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 and here. And this helped me out a lot in the beginning to keep track of where my carbons were. It still helps me. So hey, don't be afraid to dot your carbons like this, okay? No one's gonna make fun of you for not being able to mentally imagine them there. This system is here to help you, not to make things more difficult for you. Okay, so hey, just tweak it whatever way helps you the most. Okay, but there is one more thing to say about this line angle method though. Because even though I haven't drawn out the hydrogens on each of these carbons, they are still implied to be there in this line angle method. It's implied that the max number of hydrogens will be on each one of these carbons. And what does that mean? Well, check it out, you guys. How many hydrogens would be on this carbon? I'm telling you that it is implied that the max number of hydrogens are gonna be on each of these carbons. So right now, this carbon, he has one bond to it that we can visibly see to it, right? But how many bonds can carbon have? Four, right? So it's implied that this carbon is going to be bonded to one, two, three hydrogens so that it will have a total of four bonds. One, two, three, four total bonds to complete its octet. 
So hey, just because we don't draw these hydrogens in in this method doesn't mean that they're not there. They are just implied to be there and we refrain from drawing them to keep things clear and less cluttered. So hey, just realize that they are still there even though we don't draw them in the line angle method. Okay, so hey, just for practice, let's look at the next carbon, this guy right here. And this carbon has two bonds to him that we can visibly see, one right here and one right here, right? So it's implied that this carbon is gonna be bonded to how many other hydrogens? Two other hydrogens, right? To complete its octet, so one here and one here. And you can use the same logic for the rest of these carbons down the line to figure out how many hydrogens are on each of those carbons. But hey, all this method is doing, you guys, is just translating this CH3 to this CH3, this CH2 to this CH2, this CH2 to this CH2, all the way down the line, okay? Okay, so try to get used to seeing and drawing compounds this new way, you guys, because pretty soon we're gonna stop using this traditional way entirely and just use the line angle method. But for now, let me go ahead and leave the traditional form up there and put the line angle form side by side so you can get used to seeing it that way, okay? So, hey, let me just redraw this one without the hydrogens, which is how you're normally gonna see it. And that would look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can go ahead and dot here, 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 and there. Okay, so that was the straight chain version of a six carbon compound. This is what a six carbon compound looks like in a straight chain. But now let's see how it would look like if it were folded up into a ring. And a six carbon ring would look like this. Oh, and the line angle way for this compound would look like this. Put the carbon here, 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 and here. So this carbon is here, 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 and this carbon is here, okay? Just to get used to the line angle method. Okay, so mentally, if you want to imagine how we form this ring, all we did, you guys, was just take this straight chain alkane and folded it up into a ring. So hey, we took these two carbons on the end, this carbon and this carbon, and let me redraw these in red for you. So this carbon and this carbon, and we folded this thing up and stuck these two carbons together. And let me draw a dotted line to show you that we're connecting this carbon and this carbon. And hey, let's just pretend that this carbon is this carbon, and this carbon is this carbon, and this is the bond that formed between them to close that ring. Okay, so let me ask you guys, would you say that this compound is completely saturated? Does it have the max number of hydrogens attached to a six carbon compound, or is it missing some hydrogens? Well, hey, you might be tempted to say that this compound is completely saturated because it's made of all single bonds. But check it out, you guys. If you look closely, you will realize that this compound is actually missing two hydrogens. Because if you compare it to the straight chain form, you have a CH3 connected to a CH2, connected to a CH2, 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 connected to a CH3. But in the ring form, these are all CH2s connected together in a ring. So really, you're missing hydrogens from the carbons on the end. You're missing this hydrogen, and you're missing this hydrogen. Okay, so you can visually imagine that there used to be a hydrogen connected to this carbon, which was that carbon, and also this carbon, which was that carbon. But they had to lose these two hydrogens to form this ring. And hey, you guys, if this compound is missing two hydrogens, then how many units of unsaturation does it have? One unit of unsaturation, right? And that's why I told you that this compound, a cycloalkane, has one unit of unsaturation where this ring connects. 
And really, it connects anywhere in this ring, but I just chose this bond arbitrarily, for example.